Hello, I'm Heather Broadfin, violinist and instructor at Online Violin Education, where I train violinists all over the world how to improve their technical skill sets for more melodic playing. Here we're at day one of Heavenly Harmonics, five day challenge. So glad you decided to take the challenge. So let's get started. First off, let's discuss what are harmonics. Harmonics are basically uh, flute-like tones that are produced by the violin, or st any stringed instrument for that matter. So you can describe it as a flute-like tone, a whistle, but a good whistle, a healthy whistle. Okay, so it a, has a very unique sound. We have two different types of harmonics. We have artificial harmonics and natural harmonics. We're going to discuss the natural harmonics first. And what I just demonstrated for you, these are natural harmonics. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you where these guys live and discuss what you need to do with the bow in order for these to sound. Now, natural harmonics are a little bit more forgiving on the placement of your finger than artificial harmonics. And you'll find out later in the challenge when we discuss artificial harmonics. But natural harmonics, you have a little bit more of a leeway of where that finger can go to have the harmonic sound. So here, I can be here, I can move back a little bit. See, there's quite, it does change a little bit of the pitch. There's a lot of room where the finger actually touches the violin in order to produce a good tone. Okay, so it does change the pitch when you move the finger, but you do wanna be centered on the pitch. So what I'm doing here, this is A string, and I've cut the string in half, okay? So if we go to the science behind harmonics, if you take your string and you cut it in half, you have your natural harmonic there. If you take it and cut it in half again, going up, you have another harmonic. Take it and cut it in half again, you have another harmonic. And again, we have another harmonic, way up there, okay? So it works backwards as well, going down the string. If you cut that in half, you see you have different places where these, harm where these natural harmonics live. Fourth finger, third, second. And you do that on every string. Okay, so now when you play harmonics, it's so, so very important. The amount of weight that you have with your finger on the string. If you have too much weight, it's not gonna sound. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Let's take a natural harmonic third finger on the A string with too much weight. It's way too much weight, too, too much depressing of the string. Okay, we have to actually just barely touch. So you can get really close, you can see how I'm just barely touching the string there. The string is not even depressed at all. Okay, the string does not lower and get closer to the fingerboard at all. Just lightly touching, but it's so very important that that finger is perfectly in tune. So if you played your solid note, it would be in tune and you just lift your finger off to barely touching. Okay, that's how we get those beautiful harmonics. If you're pushing too hard, it's not gonna sound. You can have a lot of fun with natural harmonics. Now let's discuss the bow, okay? So with the bow, what we need to do for that harmonic to sound is a lot of speed with the bow, okay? If you do a slow bow, it can still sound, but it's not as healthy of a tone as with a lot of speed. And as far as the contact point where the bow lives on the string in order to produce a good tone with the harmonic, you want it to be pretty close to the bridge. And you can experiment. You can, if you're close to the fingerboard, it's gonna be a lot quieter. But if you're close to the bridge, it's gonna be a lot more full. But you don't wanna to get too close to the bridge because it's not gonna sound very good, okay? So that's the combination of what we need with the bow. We need to have speed and depending on your dynamic level, pretty close to the bridge, but not on top of the bridge. And that's something you want to experiment with to find out for you the best tone for that harmonic, okay? As far as the left hand, to find this harmonic that I'm playing right now, you have your hand up in third position and you extend your four with a flat finger, okay? A flat four, so you have the fleshy. You have the fleshy on that harmonic, the fleshy part of the finger. So your challenge today is first off to find this specific harmonic, which is cutting the string in half, and it's basically the octave higher than the open string. So here's our open string, here's the harmonic, and it's the octave higher 
that same pitch is third finger on the E string for A. Okay, so. So that's your first assignment is to find that harmonic, that natural harmonic, and then after that to cut the string in half and half and half to find these harmonics and then also to go the other way, half and half. Okay, and then the next challenge for you today with these natural harmonics is to go ahead on every string and play your four, three, two. And D. And the G string. Okay, listen to your tone for just speed with your bow. And I would love to see a video of you playing some natural harmonics. Come on over to the Facebook study group and post your video of your natural harmonics. I will see you there. On day two of this challenge, we're going to be discussing artificial harmonics, okay? See you then. Ciao.